Asylum, where we've been just completed a portrait class featuring Scarlett Johansson. So let's come and take a look at it. There's a few stragglers left that happen to want to hang on and pay a little longer after the class is over. We're going to go ahead and give them a little grief, maybe help them a little bit at the same time. So come on in, let's take a look at the few that are remaining, the sole survivors, if you will. Okay. The king. <laughs> there we go. So let's take a look here, see what's happening with Joe. Joe's got this color. She's made a correction on it. She's trying to compensate for that by putting some color in there. She over lightened it. Now she's trying to lay color in there to kind of restore the problems that she had. She put some opaque white on it. The opaque white drifted over at a few places on the lips and everything, but she's going to restore that because we have utmost confidence in her. Okay? So we can look around here. We can see some of the other students in here working so hard and doing such a good job. We can see the comparison here. We work really hard in here. We're going to, she's going to put some white in here, some light color maybe, correcting color that we've made, and we put that on there and lighten them. You see how we need to lighten that spot up right there? So the color, the color that she's got over there, we'll put in your gun and we'll actually spray it over there with the mask on there covering up the lips, and that'll lighten that back up. You can see how it needs to go lighter. These are looking nice over here. You're doing great in these spots. Um, but I think let's just get that chin. Otherwise, she's going to have a 5 o'clock shadow, okay? Yeah. And sometimes that might be appropriate, but she probably doesn't want to have that, okay? So um, looking over here, we've got this piece here that Simon's working on, and he's doing a good job of it. He's been working hard. He's also agreed to provide some entertainment for us later in the form of Male nude dancing, okay? So I don't know if I'm going to be around <laughs> for that, but I hear that the ladies are going to love it. I got a good writing. Oh, no, yeah, that's what I hear too. Yeah, X. <laughs> <laughs> so over here we see what he's got going on. He's working now. He's got some colors in here, a little bit of contrast. He's getting ready to adjust some of that contrast and maybe make it a little bit more su subtle in here. He's going to put a little color on the lips eventually where he's got some highlights in there. We're going to fix that. A little bit of the orange strength right there needs to be calmed down a little bit. He's done a good job with the ear showing through there. That's looking nice. The eyes are looking good. I think he's in good shape. Nice blur back here. This is looking, looking really beautiful in there. So he's going to work that area, and then we're going to come back and visit him in a few minutes, okay? We'll go over here to my station where I've been struggling with this. I made a few mistakes myself, but I'm going to show you how that I deal with that. It happens often, but you know, what we do is, is try to fix that. So basically what I've got in here is I've got a, a kind of a bruise on her head, on the, the head of Scarlet here. So I'd like to fix that, okay? So one of the things I can do to fix that is I can put some white up. But the problem is that white is blue. When I put white on it, what I'm going to get is a shift toward the blue. I don't want that, okay? I don't want a shift toward the blue. I want a painting that looks, you know, flesh-like. So I'm just test the airbrush here. That's black. I can't be using that. Let's find an airbrush that's got some color in it. The color we're using is Createx Illustration Colors. It's a color that's designed. It's a kind of a built-in, uh, kind of delayed cross-linking, which means it's got some open time. It doesn't cure right away. And uh, we're going to use that advantage for making scratchings and... Uh, paint removal, stressing, that kind of thing with the uh, paint. So what I need next is I need some white. So I'm gonna ask Joe, if she doesn't mind, pass the white, please. Okay, so here comes Joe passing me the white. There it is. Now I'm gonna contaminate my gun basically with some orange. And so I'm gonna put a little orange in there, just a drop of orange in this gun right here. And I'm just gonna spray it out until I get orange. I've got yellow, yellow, yellow. Come on orange, it's gonna come out eventually. Not gonna cooperate yet, it's of course, because we're filming. All right, so getting it out of there. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, there we go. There's our orange. Finally. Oh, my God. Okay. So we're, we're, I'm going to empty the gun out. Now the gun is dirty with orange in it. I'll put a couple of drops of this Createx illustration cone there. I'm going to spray it until I start getting white out of it. There goes orange. We just spray. What's the airbrush you're using, Bruce? I'm using a, a customized uh, Micron airbrush. It's a CMSD. And one of the things that I like about this, um, this kind of gun, I'll go ahead and just show you the one, I, my personal gun here. This is gun has a shortened trigger, okay? There's, and the shortened trigger actually gives you an advantage. When I hold the airbrush, I put my finger across the top like that and move my index finger up and down. And you see how little the trigger pulls back when I do that. A lot of people hold it like that. Of course, I don't think that's a, a fine motor skill. I, I think it's more of an advantage to hold it like that. Okay? So if you've got a shorter trigger, like I've got this trigger shorter, you're actually going to have an advantage here because it's going to give you more of a fine motor control. So I can make really, really fine dots out of this and without moving the airbrush. If I'm up here doing this with this big gross motor movement, it's really the, the airbrush is going to wiggle around. I don't think I can achieve the line and detail I want to control with this kind of a hand position. So that's why I like to use the hand position I do. All right. So over here, I'm just going to put some white in, the, in here. Let's see if we got white coming out. There we go. Now I've got white coming out, but it's got a little bit of contamination with orange. You can see it up there. So to help with that, I'm just going to get a simple piece of paper. Let's grab a piece of paper here like that. That looks fine. And I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to try to lighten that area up right in here. So I'm just going to cover up my eyebrow with my finger. Okay. That'll give me a nice soft edge. And I'm just going to go in here and just lighten that up a little bit. Now it's such a small move. I don't know 
if our viewers are going to really be able to see that. But basically, I'm just going to lighten this up just enough. I'm going to rotate it around just to give a little bit of light, uh, kind of a feeling there. Let it drift over a little bit with a little bit of a less value in there. Okay, as you can see, it's starting to get lighter right there. The orange is helping to compensate for the color shift. Whenever you light color over dark color, you're inviting a color shift in. And we're going to compensate that by putting a little orange in it. Okay, so I've got the light in there. Okay. And it's, it's looking pretty good, but I need to maybe push it over a little further. Let's just push it right up against that, just a little bit like that, okay? A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more, like that. Okay, that's my lightened area. I've overcompensated for it, over lighten it so that I can um, now come back with the color. And I'm going to put some color in here now. This is the just some straight orange, okay, straight orange. So I'm going to test the orange, get it on there. Come on, orange. Let it be darker. There we go, darker orange. Okay, now I've got the dark orange on there. I'm going to do the same thing. It would probably help if I had a little bit better shield. So let's take that shield in there like that, a little curve in it. That'll correspond to the painting a little bit more. So we're just going to go in here like this. And you see what I'm doing? I'm getting rid of the color shift and darken it very slightly with this color. You see the color going on very slowly. It's nothing drastic. So I'm just going to move it around here like that. And what we're doing is filling in that. So you can see it's starting to get rid of that color shift because orange and blue are, I'm sorry, orange. Yeah, our complementary colors, orange and blue are complementary colors there. So by putting the complement of the blue shift in there, which is orange, I can eradicate that problem, or at least subdue the, uh, the severity of it, okay? So now it's a little more matching up like that, so I'm a little bit more happy with it, and my despondency is leaving. My happiness is now elevated. Okay? Yeah, that's what it is, okay? So I think Joe wants to be on the camera now, so let's go ahead and, and let her entertain us for a few minutes, okay? <laughs> So, Joe, I'm going to come over and see how you're doing over here with your piece, okay? Joe, that's looking nice, but I think you need a little more color on there, okay? So, I would probably come in with the flesh tone, the original flesh tone we made, this one right here, this transparent flesh. And I think what we need to do is extend this a little bit because it's looking like it's almost out. So, I want to put a little bit of transparent base in here. There's the reducer. I don't need a reducer. I need some transparent base, and it is hiding from me. So, you guys see some transparent base over there? There it is. Thank you so much. Sorry, sorry. Okay, so I'm going to throw a little bit there like that. Okay, and now we're going to put the lid on it like this. Okay, I'm going to shake that up. Okay, a little agitation ball in there. And now Joe is ready to receive the paint. All right. Are you happy with that, Joe? Yep, we're just cleaning at the brush. <laughs> Joe, why don't you give us some colorful words to entertain the rest of the world? Bugger. Right? Bugger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so let's be really conservative about this. We don't want to put too much down. I'll uh, spray a little bit and evaluate, spray a little bit and evaluate. Let's see if we can creep toward the, our resolution here, okay? How do you take it? Okay, how's it going, okay? okay. Oh, where's my reference? Have you got any other tips for people starting out in photorealism? Yeah, I would say that in, in photorealism, um, subtlety is the key. If you want something to, that looks more realistic, Remember that nature is full, full of subtle nuances that need to be reflected in the painting. Um, also, the second thing would be to exercise restraint. When you're spraying paint, you want to try to reduce the amount of paint on there because it's so easy to go darker and it's hard to lighten up. Remember, you'll never be sad if you're too light, but you'll always be sad if you're too dark. Thirdly, look at your reference. Your reference is going to tell you what you need to be doing, where you need to be put the painting and all that good stuff, right? Simon? Right? Simon? Uh, right? Exactly. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, so Simon's getting ready to entertain us. I don't know if we can continue rolling here because... Uh, Simon's going, huh? Yeah, yeah, okay, he's going home. But is that it? I think that's it. <laughs> okay. Have All right. Years. Yes, I enjoyed that. Thanks, everybody. Looking forward to seeing you later from down here in Australia. Texture class. Oh, yeah, texture up. class coming up in about uh, three days. Yeah. Uh, texture special effects. I'll be showing about 13 different ways to create special effects with chemicals, stencils, uh, scratching, erasing, just stressing the paint, trying to get all these cool special effects like bark, fire, uh, what else we got? Oh, that's it, no, metal and uh, rust. Uh, it's different, just a whole bunch of different stuff. So we invite you to come, we, I think we got a sp one or two spaces left, that's all, but uh, we invite you to come and try it out. See you next time. Good work. Thanks, Drew. See you later, thanks.